Hi, I'm Monty, the software engineer, and in this video, we're going to go over how to use C++ classes in your QML code. So here we can see we have a basic QML application, and if we run it, it's just a blank window. First, let's start off by creating a new C++ class. We'll call it some class, and what we're going to want to do is make the base class QObject. Now once we have this class, let's go into the header and add a slot called call me. And with this function, we're going to add a QDebug statement and have it debug out I'm being called. Now there are two ways that I like to use C++ objects within QML. The most common way that I see other people doing it is through setting the context property. So we'll go over that first. First, we need to include our sum class header. Then we need to create our sum class object. And we'll just call it uh, test class. Uh, we're also going to need QQML context. And then we're going to create that QQML context pointer uh, root context equals engine, which is our QQML application engine dot root context. And now let's set the root context, set context property. And now we're going to give it an identifier, which we'll use in our QML code in order to access this class. So we'll just name it uh, class A, and we'll pass it the test class object. Perfect. And now within our main.qml, let's first add a button. Oh, we first need to put the import statement in, cute quick.controls, and we'll just call it my button. And let's just put it within the center of our application. And for the text, we'll just say, uh, click me. And when it's clicked, we'll have it saying class A. Now, when we started typing in class A, we can see that Qt Creator is already trying to autocomplete this for us, meaning that this QML is already aware that class A is something that we may want to use. Call me. And again, it autocompleted this uh, function here. So if we run this application now, we can see click me here, and if we click it, we can see in our application output, I'm being called. So the QML is now accessing this function within the C++ class. Another way that I like to use C++ classes within my QML code is through registering a type. So let's go through that next. First, we can comment out all the code. That is this method. And then simply add QML register type, register type and we need to give it some class. And now we need to give it a package name, so I'll just call it Monty, and then a major version number, and a minor version number. And now we need to give this component a name that we'll use in the QML code. So I'll just call it uh, some class. It doesn't have to be the same name as the class itself, but I like to do that just so it's a little easier for me when I'm in the code, I don't have to recall what I named it. So here back in our QML, We'll get rid of class A. First, we need to import Monty 1.0. And now that we've imported our Monty package, we can use the class just like any other QML component. So I named it some class, and I'll give it an ID of my class. And then here, I'll say when I click this button, I want my class dot call me. Now let's run this. And we can see here when we hit click me, it says I'm being called. So that's another way to access the C++ function within QML. Now, what's the difference between the two methods? Let's first get rid of this and get rid of this. And let's go back to our sum class. And within our class constructor, let's add a debug statement saying I'm being created. Now, if we go back to the main.cpp, get rid of this, 
and then go back to our first method of context property and then back to our main.qml here let's leave out any kind of reference to my new class and not use it at all so if we hit run once the application loads we can see here I'm being created has been debugged out meaning even though we're not using it in our QML code the object itself has still been created and is running in the background conversely now if we go back to the register type method so we'll get rid of all this get rid of this and then put back the QML register type now even if we add the import statement import Monty 1.0 and we run it, we can see here that debug statement has not been printed out. So that class hasn't been created yet. Now, if we add the class here, uh, some class ID my class, and then run it, now we can see the debug has been printed out, meaning the class has been created. So with register type, the QML will dictate when the class is created and when it's destroyed. Once you use a different QML page, for example, if we had a, a new page.qml and we go to that page, if the main.qml page is destroyed, the class is also destroyed, meaning it's not running within the background. But if we use the set context property method, you always need to have this class uh, initialized and running in the background. Now, if you're going to be using some class throughout your QML application, uh, this is a perfectly good way to do so. Uh, this way you maintain the state if there is any uh, of test class throughout the lifetime of your application. Now let's go back to our sum class and show another way that we can expose a function to our QML. And that is through Q invocable. And we'll call this another function, void another function. And if we add this into our CPP and just say Q debug another function. Now let's go back to our main CPP. Uh, I like to use QML register type, so I'm just gonna keep uh, using it that way. So 1.0. Okay, so here let's uh, use my class on clicked, my class dot another function. If we run it, We can see if we hit click me, another function is being debugged out. And that is how to use it uh, using a function declared with the Q invocable macro. So what if we want to use variables from our uh, C++ class? The way that I like to do it is through Q properties. So if we start typing in Q property here, now I like to use this because it, it gives you uh, an easy to use template where I can say this is a Q string. And what I like to name it is some var. Now we can use this as a guide on which functions we need to implement in our code. So first we want to add some var, which is a Q string. And then we're going to want uh, some way to write to it, which is set some var. So here I'll do void set some var, and that will take a Q string. And then notify will want a signal that will notify when our sum bar has changed. And then we'll also add a private variable, which will keep track of the state of sum bar. So Q string uh, M sum bar, which now let's go into our CPP and on the side, we'll open up our header file. So we know which uh, methods we need to implement. So first one is Q string sum bar. So we'll do Q string sum class some var and this will just return m some var next one we want is the setter set some var so void some class set some var and this will take a q string and we'll just say new var first we'll check if m some var uh, if it doesn't equal new var then we'll want m some var to equal new var and then we'll emit our signal that some var has changed. Now in our constructor, let's set the initial value of m sum var. And we'll set it to one, two, three. Now in our main.qml, let's close this out. We already have my class here, so let's create a text label. 
ID my label, and we'll just put that in the top, uh, top center of our application. So anchors top parent dot top horizontal center parent dot horizontal center, and that's also give it a top margin 20. So it's not right at the top. Um, let's set the pixel size so it's a little easier to read. And we'll set the text to my class dot sum var. And we can see here it already wants to autocomplete it for us. And notice how with the Q property, we're not using any parentheses after sum var. Uh, on clicked, let's actually have my class dot set sum var to one, uh, actually, ABC. Now let's run this example. So we can see here that my label has grabbed the uh, initial text of what sum var is. It's one, two, three. And if we hit click me, so the click me button has used the set sum var function to set the value of m sum var to abc. The QML was notified of the change and changed the value of my label to the new abc. Now we could have also used q invocable and made a getter method for sum var. So let's try that out q string get sum var. And we'll put this into our C++ and we'll just do the same thing, return m sum var. And now if we do that in our QML code, let's set this instead of sum var is my class dot get sum var. Here we can see that since we're not using the Q property, we have the parentheses. And let's see what happens when we run this code. Here we can see that it gets the initial value of one, two, three. However, since it's not a Q property and the QML is not aware of any changes when updates are made, if we hit click me, it's now ABC. However, QML wasn't notified of it and it still thinks it's one, two, three, so it hasn't updated the value. We could do this simply by adding a connection. So let's do that. Let's add a connection here, connections, and we'll target the my class variable. Now we'll open up the sum class header and we'll look for sum var changed. One thing to keep in mind is QML is very picky uh, about the syntax used. So the signal has to start with a lowercase letter. And then in the QML side, we do on and then a capital letter, sum var changed. And we'll just say uh, my label dot text equals get oh, my class dot get some var. So you can see here, we need a capital S and in our sum class, we needed a lowercase s for our signal. So let's try this out. We can see my label has the initial one, two, three. We'll hit click me and the connections work with the on sum var changed. It's notified. It knows to update my label dot text, my class dot get some var, and now it has the new ABC value.